Hi there, I'm Sue Barnes and Lavender Green Flowers um, is my company. It's uh, a florist that has supported Royal Horticultural Society on many occasions and at the moment we would be getting ready for Chelsea Flower Show which as you know we can't, we can't uh, take part in this year. However, I'm going to show you today just how easy it is to create some fantastic designs at home um, just with a really, really good pair of scissors, some flowers out of the garden um, and some really lovely containers. I guess most people don't know uh, when they go into a flower shop sometimes where to start. A really good place to start would be to ask the florist, um, are there any English flowers here? Are there any British grown flowers here? Or are there any fair trade flowers here? It's important these days that we support as many people in our industry as we can. And if we look on a normal, hopefully it's not a normal, this is well smart, flower display in your local forest, you will see English flowers, you will see seasonal flowers. Um, today we've got some things like nigella here which could help, we've got some lovely lilacs, we've got English scented roses rather than the cultivated ones. Um, so things can smell like that fantastic rose that you smelled in your granny's garden years ago. We've got lots of things like hellebores, but you don't have to go to a florist. You can create some fantastic designs um, that will really uh, knock the spots off of anything you've seen before just by cutting things if you're lucky enough to have a garden. Um, I'm going to show you how to do that now. At Lavender Green, like any good florist, when you walk in there, they should know how to make things look exactly how you would like them to look. The trick is to make it feel the way you would like it to feel, to, to sort of take ownership of it. Um, and quite often people say, well, I'd love it to have a Tuscan, Italian Tuscan feel. Um, and that's very, very difficult to do when you're in a back, an, urban, an urban landscape. Um, so what I'd like to show you now is to really take just take a few of the flowers that actually you can all find in your gardens at the moment so they're not expensive roses or lilies or anything else um, and, and put them together in a way and in a setting that will make your party feel exactly the way you would like it to feel. I'm going to take some northern lilies, I'm going to take some ranunculus, I'm going to take some hellebores, all of these flowers will be growing in the garden at the moment. Um, and I'm going to take some lilac and I'm going to show you exactly what to do with them uh, to give you a really lovely spring contemporary look to the table. All of the lovely parties that we're going to be having now, and, and let's face it, we can't all wait uh, to get going on them, are probably going to be initially in the garden anyway. So this sort of tablescape will give you a, um, a very simple, clean, quite contemporary look. Um, and it's very easy to achieve. So you can just simply go with a, a few matching vases like we've got here. They're different sizes and shapes, but actually in concept, they're exactly the same. And that gives you quite a clean look to the design. Put some night lights out if, they're, if it's going to be an evening party. Um, but the most important thing is to try and surround it with things that also make sense. So today I've given you a backdrop here, which is just a collection of vases and jugs, just filled with one type of flower. Again, quite a cool look, quite a contemporary look and an easy to achieve look. These could be three different types, types of foliage, for example, just cut from the garden. But here we've got parrot tulips, we've got ranunculus, we've got, got some garden rose, and then we've got, for me, the all important lilac. So it gives you quite a smart garden look, really. In isolation, that still doesn't make sense. So, Mix and match with either, if you've got a wooden top table, put napkins out. And I like to have the extra special finishing touch that really does show your guests that you care, which is a little nosegay. Again, it could be herbs, it could be just one type of flower, but it's something that other people don't do. And I think that's what we've always specialised in doing, those little caring finishing touches. Incorporate some lovely linens. Doesn't have to be white, could be white. Um, uh, and there are some beautiful sludgy, earthy colours around at the moment. And I've just given you two different looks here, two different colourways here that really go in nicely with these, these flowers. So we've got garden flowers, the right containers, put some napkin designs out for, for your guests to enjoy, um, hopefully that smell good too, and the right colour napkins. And then give yourself that all important backdrop. Nothing looks good in isolation. Surround yourself with beauty. Okay, so eating out in the garden, which is probably what we're all going to be doing soon, um, well now, uh, will involve everything that's in the garden at the moment. Um, and 
Parties are not always smart events. In fact, with family and friends and only six people, they really can't be. Um, so herbs was a great way to kind of uh, decorate a space that's informal. It smelled wonderful. I mean, people all night long will be pinching all of the leaves and, and the fragrance is absolutely fantastic. It's clean, it's fresh, it's informal, it's relaxed. You can have a pizza, it doesn't have to be anything smart, um, or, a, or a really lovely um, Italian meal in the garden. And I would always suggest that you include things that you love. So I will put things like the Victorian fishing, glass fishing weights, um, which are again, or all over the place, you can, get, you can find them anywhere. Choose really interesting little vases, these little garlic pots are great. Um, anything that's foodie will work well here. Um, and in, you know, ask guests to if, if you've got lamb and rosemary um, as a as a main course, for example, chop off bits of the rosemary and and invite people to add it to the meal. Um, these lovely little tapas bowls are just fantastic. You know, don't don't go for for something that's standard and boring and easy to find and that everybody else has got when you can really be creative and have some fun. So my advice for a garden party, if you're not going to go to the expense um, of, of having big flowers all over the place, is cut from the garden, use herbs, use plants that are in the garden, have some really interesting little containers and include things on the table that you absolutely love that are part of the family almost. Now I really feel at home. This is exactly the look that I would create if I were having a family party. Um, I think that sitting in the garden, table of six, surround yourself first of all with beautiful things, things that you absolutely love. Um, don't just plonk a table in the middle of nowhere. So here we've put a backdrop of hydrangeas in potted plants, we've put herbs around us, we've got little lolly trees going on, um, but the table itself is a combination of lots of different types of container. Here we've got lovely French on deuce pots and on deuce candles. You might not be lucky enough to have those, not a lot of people are, but any small and different sized terracotta pots will do it. And then fill it full of very, very simple flowers. So um, if you use plants like Viola, they have a wonderful fragrance, they're edible, they're not gonna cause anyone any problems. Um, and then you've got Ubrisha, things again that can start their life in the middle of the table when they're in full bloom and their perfection and then put them in the garden afterwards, things like gentian. It doesn't matter how um, scruffy almost a plant looks, it's natural and that's what this look is all about. But add in things like tiles, add in candles, add in pots, add in anything that you've got around and, and the whole design becomes yours um, and is a joy to, to eat around.